another session cooking with your coach my name is courtney handlin i am the wellness practitioner and health coach at the waukesha employee health and wellness center powered by everside health and uh today we're doing a couple rest well i should say today i'm doing a recipe um, and you'll see a couple with this for our healthier holidays challenge um, and this one that we're doing right now is the pumpkin gingerbread smoothie so let's go ahead and get started and you might ask um, why make your own smoothie there's a lots of smoothies uh, smoothie shops out and about that you can get get one on your way to wherever you're going but really um, as I'm sure it's no surprise they're a lot healthier when you make them on your own there's no preservatives um, generally going to be a lot less added sugar because you can see what you're putting into it you have the freedom to really personalize it the way that you want to and I will even show you some ways that I'm doing that today um, it's it's quick really quick and nutrient rich rich um, I love those little like portable blenders where you can just throw everything in there and then you know, blend it when you're when you head out and you can recharge it and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and it's an easy way to get more vegetables in and use up the things that you have around your house, whether it's uh, produce or spices, milk, you know, things like that that need to get used up. So um, just a little bit about smoothie, like kind of some basic tips for smoothies. Uh, we do have another uh demo on making smoothies where this so for those of you who've seen that this slide might look a little bit familiar um but sometimes we get caught up in the like i don't know like i don't have all the ingredients or how do you make a proper smoothie and i really like to remind people that it, it don't make it so complicated um you just need a couple basics and and the ratios really are kind of dependent on your personal taste if you like a more liquidy smoothie you're probably going to add a little bit more milk if you like a thicker smoothie maybe you add less milk or or less water or uh, maybe you add more frozen vegetables or frozen fruit um and then again with that personalized you can really change up the flavor of what you're using um or thicker Greek yogurt, that's what I was going to say. I'm um, adding some plain Greek yogurt and we'll make it thicker as well. So again, there are on the slide some suggestions for making one serving, kind of the, the ratio that you might be looking for. Um, again, it's just a suggestion and, and you can see there's a lot of different ways that you can take it. Um, and uh, like I said, a lot of times I don't even measure things. I just am like, oh, this I need the, this, this, and this to make this flavor or this recipe is calling for the, the pumpkin and ginger and molasses, you know, so I might put those in and things that I'm not as familiar with or don't use as often, um, or I know are really strong flavor, I might measure those, um, but other things like milk, I don't tend to measure, measure it. Um, all right, let's go ahead then and dive into our smoothie for today. So it is the pumpkin gingerbread smoothie. Um, so the the ingredients and the the really suggested uh, measurements are up there. Um, I do have my banana in here ready to go. It's frozen. Um, honestly, I think adding using the frozen fruit is great, and I don't add ice then. I, it creates a more like smoother texture. Um, so I have a frozen banana. Um, I do have a pump. Uh, actually, this is squash puree. Um, so it's it's not technically like the pumpkin, you know, it's not the canned canned pumpkin. Um, it's squash from my in-laws garden um, that was pureed in a blender and then uh, frozen. Um, really what I'll probably do with the rest of the, I usually freeze it in two cup portions and with the rest of what I have, I will probably refreeze it in like a tablespoon or so, just dollops on unless if I think of a recipe I want to make today with that uh, or in the next few days. But then it's just another thing to like throw in the smoothies and make your smoothies that way. Um, the other thing that I'm doing that's different than the recipe is uh, the recipe does call for apple cider vinegar. Um, while I do have that, I also had some of this uh, honey ginger vinegar um, from a local oil and vinegar company called Oro D. Oliva. Um, and so I just thought that would be kind of a fun uh, alternative to use instead of apple cider um, would just bring forth more of that ginger flavor. 
Um, let's see. And today, you know, the recipe does say almond milk, unsweetened almond milk. Um, I don't have that on hand right now, but I do have um, unsweetened uh, soy milk. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, the other thing is I will be, so this is not in the recipe, but you might have seen it on the other slide. Um, I just have a mixture here of uh, chia seeds, hemp seeds, and ground flaxseed. I like those. I think it's going to bring forth a nutty flavor. And then it's also going to increase the protein and fiber of the smoothie. So it'll keep me fuller, longer, and it's got the good fats. So I'm adding that in. Uh, lastly, uh, before I go into blending, I did just want to talk a second about molasses. So, um, so the recipe does call for blackstrap molasses. And to be honest, again, I don't use molasses that often. And uh, I had just picked up a like whatever I could do grocery order. Um, they only have one kind of molasses, so I did that. And then when I was getting the ingredients together this morning to demo the smoothie for you. I looked at it and I'm like, what is blackstrap molasses? So I decided to research that. And actually, if you are able to get that, it is um, the more nutrient dense version of molasses. Uh, it's going to have a lot more vitamins and minerals in it, whereas this molasses that I have is basically just cane sugar. Um, and so the the blackstrap molasses is is boiled down further. Um, so it's going to have less sugar in it as well. So for those of you who are really trying to be uh, really mindful of your sugar intake for, for health reasons or, or personal reasons, um, that might be a good one when you get to, you know, especially if you're a holiday baker, um, thinking about seeking out that blackstrap molasses specifically instead of just a regular old molasses off the shelf um, it's going to be a lot less processed as well so where can you get that that i'm not sure um i will be doing some research on that i'm guessing probably a store like woodman's would have it uh, you know you can always find things on amazon so that could um be a good place for you to go as well and then you know again for the the spices today i did measure them but um depending on what it was like. Personally, I love cinnamon, so I would probably just shake it in there and, and you know, taste as I go. Um, one thing I will say about ginger, so I happened to look on the back of this um, because originally the recipe was just like one teaspoon fresh or, um, or ground ginger. I didn't have fresh ginger, so I was planning to just use ground ginger. And it does say on the back, a fourth teaspoon of ground ginger is equivalent to one teaspoon fresh ginger. So I'm, uh, I took some ginger back out of my measuring thing, put it back. I was glad that I read that, especially since I have the ginger in my vinegar. Um, but what I did do is I do have this freeze dried ginger. Um, and so that is a one to one. Uh, so I, I put a little bit of that in there just to, for a little extra kick. I might be like, whoo, bold, but, um, we're going to give it a try. I'm going to play with it. So let's go ahead and add all of our stuff to our uh, blender here before my banana really gets unthawed. Um, the other thing I would like to say, I don't know if this is an official tip, but personally, here, let me move this down a bit. Um, personally, I think it helps to put the liquid in first. So, well, with the exception of I'll get the frozen stuff in there and then I will uh, add the liquid. I think that just makes it a little bit easier on your blender. Yeah, I don't know if that's an official fact, but that seems to be my observation. So I'm just gonna add, that molasses is gonna take a bit. So I'm gonna fold that over there and add my other things while wow, that is dripping out. Go, get all that good cinnamon in there. And, you know what? I might need to go grab a spatula. I should have had that. One second. All right. So we're getting a spatula. I do like gingerbread and really like molasses or ginger snap cookies. So I'm just going to take the extra time to get this molasses out of here. Though maybe I shouldn't now that I know I've got the really sweet basically sugar syrup here. Okay, so there's that. And 
And I would think too, um, like, honestly, if I saw this recipe and I thought, oh, that sounds really good. I want to make that. But I didn't have molasses. I would probably just make, assume like I can make a similar thing. Uh, just include the ginger and skip the molasses and it'll still be tasty. Would be my guess. So if you're thinking I don't have that or, or a different ingredient. The other thing too is Google can be very helpful for those kind of things when you're like, what can you sub for? You know, this ingredient. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pause so that you don't have to listen to my blender. Uh, and uh, then we'll meet back here in just a second to see the final product and get that all served up. And I've got it in a cup even here. Um, you can see that, whoops, running down the side. Classic picture probably, right? Um, and it is delicious. Got some on my fingers there. Um, and I did top with the, the uh, recommended topping with some pecans. I did um, just a quick little toasting of some pecans this morning uh, in my pan and even some toasted coconut. I threw some coconut in there as well and toasted it. I love toasting nuts or coconut in the stovetop just because it's so quick. You don't have to heat the whole oven, although the heating of the oven is nice now that it starts to get cooler. It's nice to warm the house, but um, this is just so much quicker and I think you have so much more control. So heating, if you're, if you like to toast your nuts for salads or, you know, different recipes or coconut, um, my recommendation is to do it on the stove. You probably have to do it in smaller batches, but um, I think it's great. So anyway, here we are. The uh, pumpkin gingerbread smoothie. Delicious, delicious. I think even my kids would eat that. The other thing that I didn't add to here, but now I wish I would have, um, and another way to sneak in vegetables is like a handful or two of spinach. Uh, really just a great way to boost nutrition. You can't, you can't even taste it. So, all right. Well, that was our pumpkin gingerbread smoothie. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you feel, uh, motivated now to make your own smoothies a little bit more often and get those fruits and vegetables in and keep an eye on our YouTube channel for more videos like this um, and uh, reach out for coaching. If, for those of you who are eligible, if you're interested and in struggling with things like meal prep or making making the breakfast. Um, and then also we have a podcast, Tackle Boat Wellness. So be sure to check that out as well. And for those of you in our Healthier Hel Holidays Challenge, I hope that it is going well for you. Um, I hope you're enjoying all the resources and uh, having enjoying your holidays in a healthier, more mindful way. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for joining.